Hi, scientists. <laughs> it's Scientist Kelly here from Seattle, Washington. And I am so excited about today, just like in every day with you guys. And um, yes, we're going to wrap up this amazing unit today. And there will be a few times where you might just need to pause me. And you might have to do something and think about it. And that's okay. And I want you to be reflective of this unit. I mean, come on. <laughs> we learned about animal communication, human communication, and now we're into the tech communication. Something for everybody. I mean, imagine if you were an animal lover, you got a good portion of the science unit being an animal lover. If you're interested in humans, because all of us are, you know, what do we know about communication and our patterns that we use? And we're all using digital devices. So I know that you're interested. Okay, whether you use games or you just like to text with your friends, watch video, watch television, etc. Okay, let's get started here. Look at this image here. It's a zoomed in image from a computer. What do you notice? Yeah, yes, I'm hearing you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear Minecraft pixels. It's pixelated. It's like the grid work that we've been doing. Yeah. Um, when digital devices send images, they're using binary code. See this over my shoulder here? Yep, we talked about that with the ones and zeros, just like we did. If we look closely, we can sometimes see the grid-like pattern or the pixels here. So this is a very zoomed in um, picture of the fork and knife. Remember, we were looking at what the message was that this was sending not long ago. Each square is a pixel. Here has a code for its color. Oof, that's a lot of codes. These codes are combinations of zeros and ones, just like we use. So if you look closely here, like the white components, all zeros, but this lighter blue is one zero one 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 one. <laughs> No, oh, oh, look at the difference here in the next blue, 100 and then 111. Okay, awesome sauce, I love this. Uh, digital devices can send and receive information across long distances. These devices let us receive an image that looks exactly the same as the original image from the sender. Now think about that. This whole world of digital devices um, communicating across them, binary code. If I take a picture of anything, like my tomato plant maybe, and I send it to my mom, I want that picture to be exactly like the one I think it's going to be, right? I want it to look like that tomato plant that I took a picture of. We know digital devices use the binary code. In the code challenge today, bing, 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 code challenge, we'll send and receive messages across the room, across a digital device maybe, using binary code. Okay, this will be the challenge. Now, I'm not sure what's gonna be the real challenge. Is it gonna be using the binary code? Or is it gonna be finding someone else to do this with? If we were in the classroom, you know, you'd be partnered up, you would have your space across the room, but here I need you to find and think about somebody that might be in your house right now, or your apartment, your condo, wherever you're living. You might think about somebody that you reach via telephone sometimes, or messaging. You know, I FaceTime my mom a lot. Um, we always see each other on video. Some of us have been acquainted with Zoom, there's other platforms that you might be using with your classroom right now. So think about who it is that you might be able to do this activity with today. Two things here, okay? You're going to either use the communicator tool as the app and Amplify. It might be through your district. It might be through the Amplify site that you find this. And or you can be drawing your own seven by seven grid, just like here. We've practiced this a few times. Um, you can see it over my shoulder. I practiced drawing one in a larger scale. So whichever you have, we're going to just roll with it and go with it, okay? If you're in the communicator tool, though, you're first going to go and use the encoder section here. And you're going to press that. 
you are going to use the new code because you're going to enter an image that you want to code. And it's the black and white image large. This is the 7 by 7 grid that we've been working off, so it works perfectly. Um, in order to get your image in here, you would press the black square first and then select the square that you want to be black. Okay, you would do this for each section. If you make a mistake, you can go back and make it a white one again. No problem. In your notebook, on page 92, it could be in your science notebook, your district packet, or as I said, we're going to roll with it and go with it. You can do a 7 by 7 grid, no problem. You know, just get out. If you have a post-it again, a scrap piece of paper, you know, I would make a few 7 by 7 grids. You might need to pause me right now to do that. Or you might just need to pause me to find that notebook of yours. So page 92. Once you get there, you're going to think about what you want to code, what image it is, and you're going to fill it out on this page, you know, shade in the boxes that you want to depict. After you finish making your image and recording it in your notebook or on your post-it pad, um, you're going to turn and you're going to, up here in the upper right hand corner if you're in the, the communicator tool, you're going to toggle it to the right where it shows the binary code where you will see the zeros, the ones of all the areas that are black that have been shaded in. So the black areas are ones and the white areas are zeros. So you will depict your thing on page 94 here, your image, whatever it is, it doesn't even matter. Um, and you're going to record it from, you know, the upper left to the right. And then you're going to string together your binary code here. Okay, you have to read record it very carefully. Um, it's easy to mix up. When you practice saying 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, it gets super confusing. So you kind of got to take a breath, slow down. Okay, you're going to accurately try to record it. So therefore your communication will be successful later on. Okay. Your job right now will be to think about creating your image and record it on page 92 of your notebook. Once you have that, you're going to show the binary code so you can see the zeros and ones, and you're going to write that string of code down. Here's an image that I did. Um, I like to call it my little cat. <laughs> I don't have a cat here. I'm sorry about that. But um, I did this little cat image. And the first thing I did was I went into the encoder, I clicked the boxes, and then I did the toggle where I could see the binary code here. And then on my notebook page right here, I want to show you so that we're all kind of on the same page here. I'm going to shade in, and I've got yellow. It doesn't matter what you use if you're doing it with a marker or a pencil right now. Okay, can you see how I'm shading in my cat's head right here? And then I'm going to shade all the way down for the body, etc. But then the next task will be for you to string your code across, okay? That means that you're going to be looking right here first and you're going to write your code on the bottom of your page so it's one zero one zero 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 i have four zeros one two three four okay remember once you have this line accomplished you come back to the left just like we read and you're going to go one 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 zero 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 one i think i got that okay let's see so i did this line and remember you're going to come right back to the left and you're just going to keep stringing your numbers across and even if i lose space on this first line i can jump to the next one okay so this will be your first step 
is getting your image taken care of. You're going to decode it. No, sorry, you're going to encode it so that you can get the binary code so that you can string along your code so that when and if maybe, um, let's say I call my mom and I have her set up a seven by seven grid. Okay, yeah, mom, that's right. <laughs> yeah, and I say, okay, it's going to be just like we read and we're going to start in the up, upper left hand corner and we're going to save, I'm going to tell her the code. So one, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. Can you see I'm reading my code there? And I would talk to her and have her shade in or even write the code one, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. And that's how I would kind of be thinking about what it, what image I want and how am I going to communicate it to the person that I want to be playing this little game with, okay? Let's see here. Um, on page 93, it's going to have you kind of slow down for a minute and write about your own thoughts on how you think binary code might help you send a message across the room or across the phone. Like imagine me talking to my mom. How's the binary code going to help me communicate it? It's going to be easy? Is it going to be hard? Okay, do a quick reflection. I know I'm fast and I'm energetic, but you know, sometimes it pays to kind of slow down. Think about it for a minute. Okay. You're going to design a communication plan. I've been warning you. Who is it that you're going to talk to? Who is it you're going to communicate to? What's your image? Where are you going to be when you get it? Okay. I'm going to read this, pa this passage here that we've read already, but I do want you to think about it. Okay. What do you think this paragraph means? That's the question you're going to ponder. Digital devices use binary code to send images, text, sounds such as voices, and even movies. Information that has been changed into binary code is called digitized information. Everybody say that quick. Digitized. Yeah. Before digitized information, messages could only travel so far before degrading or breaking down. For instance, a sound signal can be loud but there is still a limit on how far that sound can travel. With digital devices, humans can now send messages to someone halfway around the world with the click of a button, and that message will arrive looking or sounding exactly as it intended. You will send your binary code across a room or a digital device, meaning a phone call, a video call. What might be challenging? Hmm. What ideas do you have about how you could send your message quickly and accurately without having it degrade or break down? I mean, think about me and my mom here. If I'm firing up 00011101001001, will that be a challenge? <laughs> <laughs> should be able to track me. Um, what other ways could we think about passing along our binary code in a, you know, a quick and accurate manner so that um, whoever's receiving it knows exactly what I'm talking about? You have to be creative. But remember, the purpose of this code challenge, quickly and accurately send a message through, okay, quickly and accurately. Page 94 in your notebooks. I want you to slow down. If you don't have your notebooks right, district packet or just a scrap piece of paper, what's your plan? Think about how it might work. You might have to draw it out. Like maybe you plan to do this with a sibling and you plan for your sibling to sit downstairs maybe and you're upstairs and you're thinking about how um, to communicate and where should she be sitting, where should you be sitting, things to that nature. Take time to do this. Okay. 
Uh, if I turn to page 96 in my notebook, this is about sending and decoding images. Okay, and it's about how if we were in the classroom, one partner would send and the other partner would receive, vice versa, and then the other partner would send and receive. Okay, it's very much like you're thinking of your image, you're going to send it to somebody, they're going to receive it. Hopefully, they too will create an image and send it to you to be received so that you can have that experience of being the receiver. Go ahead and go to the Code Communicator tool. When you receive the message, let's say little sister makes you a message and she's giving you the binary code, you can use the Code Communicator tool to decode her message. Let's take a look. You would go to Live Code. You're, you're in the same large black and white image here. Um, as you receive the binary code, you're going to press 0 or 1 instead of the white or black, right? Now you're working with the numbers, and then eventually you will toggle up in the right-hand corner to show the colors so that you can see the image that was presented here or that your little sister or your mom or somebody else creates for you. Oh no, <laughs> it's this time already. Okay, so you might need to pause the video to do all of that activity. You know, get your image, send it out, play along with your siblings, your parents, somebody, a neighbor actually, you know, in your backyard, your side yard. Maybe you can communicate that through um, binary code with your neighbor if you have a chance. But the questions you need to be asking after you do so, did you, did your image get decoded accurately? <laughs> Were they the same? Was everything off by one, you know, pixel, by one column, by one little square? Think about that, you know, see if you can look at it, see if you can evaluate it. On page 79, ooh, my bad, on page 97 in your notebook, um, think about each question here, record your response in your notebook. You might need to pause me here because it's really important for scientists to slow down and think about how this code challenge kind of played out for you, what worked and what didn't. So if I look at the first question here, um, it says, how accurate was the image you decoded compared to the original one? Why do you think so? Um, the second big question is, how is what you did for the code challenge similar to the way the digital devices send and receive information? Yeah, you're always trying to tie it back to what you've learned, right? I mean, we're tying it back to um, binary code and patterns in human communication but also those bottlenose dolphins and all the other animals that you learned about. And in what ways did you think binary code is useful for communicating across distances? Because you know already, <laughs> I love talking to my mom and I definitely need the binary code to get that to work well, okay? The big concept you need to be walking away with, though, is humans use patterns to communicate information and use technology to communicate those patterns, the binary code, across long distances, right? We're using patterns to communicate short and long distances. What other questions do you have about how humans or other animals use patterns to communicate. I mean, I found myself looking at binary code. I thought of all crazy questions about <laughs> how does it really work? I hope that you've been inspired to look further. We understand maybe that it's binary code and there's patterns in it, but how does it work? Have you looked further into that? Or maybe you've investigated another animal and how they communicate. We've talked about how scientists use models. I mean, go all the way back to the beginning. 
when um, the slinky was being used or the jump rope was being used, that was modeling. Okay, you've used a variety of simulations. We've recently just used the code communicator tool. And the other one, oh, the sound wave simulation, right, with the music and the particles and it vibrating and it colliding across. Um, how were they helpful, helpful for understanding sound? Yeah, wasn't it just so unique to have something visual for something that I can't just grab and look at when somebody's talking to me? I can't catch that sound wave that's coming in my ear. Yeah. Through studying sound, you gained a better understanding of patterns. What did you learn about sound that helped you understand how scientists use patterns? Let me read that again. What did you learn about sound that helped you understand how scientists use patterns? Yeah, scientists are using the waveforms, right? Um, they talk about how the pitch and the amplitude of the sound. Yeah, you guys remember? Congratulations! <laughs> I don't want it to be over yet. Uh, by talking, reading, writing, using models and investigating like scientists, we've learned a lot about waves, energy, and information. And I hope that you've learned something throughout this entire unit. Um, bravo to you for sticking with us, for doing this online video with us throughout this entire unit. It's been a pleasure. Be curious, scientists. Get out. Investigate. Practice some of these code challenges still. Create your own code. Be inspired to do more. Okay, thank you so much, scientists. I look forward to seeing you again. You never know where we will meet up. Okay, bye.